أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال جعلني على خزائن الأرض إني حفيظ عليم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد The ayah I just recited to you is not in the packet It's uh, actually something I meant to do later on But I might as well just introduce the entire concept of leadership with this, uh, with this uh, ayah belongs to Surah Yusuf, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam, when he came out of prison, uh, he came out of prison as, resu- as a result of interpreting dreams. And when he was brought before the king, not only did he establish his innocence, he actually presented his resume. Uh, Yusuf Aleyhisselam actually asked for the job He wasn't given the job, he, was, he asked for it himself And he didn't just ask for it, he said, here's why you should hire me He said, اجعلي على خزائن الأرض Which basically means, literally means Install me upon the treasures of the land What that means in simple, simple English is Make me the treasurer I would like to be the treasury secretary of Egypt And here's why Indi hafidun alim First of all, I'll guard this duty. I'll take it seriously. I won't sleep on the job. I won't have lame duck sessions in my Congress. I'm going to be on the job. I'll, I'll take care of it. I'll be honest about it. And I know what I'm doing. Alim. Because the guys around you are a bunch of idiots. They're going to destroy this problem. And it's going to create a fiscal crisis. And people are going to die. So I need to take care of business. I'm letting you know I'm qualified to handle this. Leadership is about confidence. Leadership is about confidence. Too much confidence and you have arrogance. If you have too much confidence, you have arrogance. That's why in, before you have leadership, the, uh, the, the, the discussion we began with today was understanding that you and I are abd to Allah, slaves to Allah, which is the lowest position you can have. But when you are a abd of Allah, then you realize Allah, you, this is not your talent, Allah has given you certain talents. Allah has given you certain abilities. And it is your God-given responsibility as a slave of Allah to use those talents to the best of your ability. And if that means you have to take a position of leadership, well that means you have to take a position of leadership. If nobody's going to stand up and take the job, you have to take the job. That is not arrogance, that is actually being true to what Allah has given you. Arrogance is when you are obsessed with holding your title and you can't let it go. The motivation Yusuf salam has for leadership is because it's going to save lives. Not because he likes treasury secretary, minister of treasuries. He doesn't like the title. He wants to save lives. That's true leadership. Leadership not for its own sake, for the sake of providing a service. If you truly believe you have something to offer in leadership, go for it. And some of you, Allah has created you natural born leaders. Kids cut class when you cut class in school. You're a leader. You know, people go to the restaurant that you suggest. They don't go to any other restaurant. You're a leader. Allah has given you that naturally. You have a personality, it's charismatic, people listen to you, they do what you say. You have an influence over the opinions of others, you are a leader. And some of you are not leaders. Some of you are extremely good followers. You guys are machines. Amazing. And you know what? You should acknowledge that, accept that as a gift from Allah because the world doesn't just work on leaders. <laughs> the, work need, the world needs good followers. Some of you are neither leaders nor followers. Those of you need to make a lot of istighfar. So you'll find yourself. <laughs> okay? Because you need to do something. <laughs> you need to fit somewhere. You know? But now, now that we, uh, basically the, the two qualities that, that Yusuf salam describes of himself that justify his leadership role are hafiz and alim. You will guard that responsibility. You will take care of it seriously. It is something you will protect. And second, you know what you're doing. 
So sincerity is under, it's implied, it's obviously that if you're a slave of Allah, sincerity doesn't even have to be talked about because it's understood. That's the foundation anyway for all actions. But on top of that, one, you have a very serious attitude towards the job. Two, you actually know what you're talking about. When it comes to that job, you know what you're talking about. So religious fervor, you're extremely religious, you're extremely righteous, you're extremely pious. You're a hafiz of Qur'an, that doesn't mean you're a leader. That does not mean you're a leader. You're an extreme zahid, you make dua for hours and hours and hours and hours. That does not mean you're a leader. Because leadership requires one, seriousness with the job, and two, knowledge of the job. Abu Dhar Ghathari anhu was so spiritual that the Prophet compared his spirituality وسلم, to the spirituality of Isa salam. Can you imagine? Wouldn't give him leadership position though. Wouldn't do it. He'd rather give it to Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, 18 year old. Kid's a natural leader. He's gonna get leadership position. Because the, the Prophet saw people for what they're capable of. And that's true leadership. To pick leaders too. To see people with leadership potential and say, hey, come here. I want, the, I want you to do this work. Allocating talent. That's a quality of leadership. To be able to see this person is good for this, this person is good for that. And put people to work. That's part of management, that's part of leadership, right? People do master's degrees and PhDs in human resource management and have entire seminars on this stuff. All we have is more than enough, the sunnah of our messenger wasallam. What an amazing human resource allocation he did. <laughs> it's incredible. This is a science, Musab ibn Umayr, go to Medina. That's human resource allocation, you know? He says Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, lead the salat and praise behind him as producing a leader. That's what our Prophet did Ali wasalam. But now we get to the tough part. This is what's going to take most of our time. You see, in Islamic work, there's a tendency, there, there's, two kinds of, there's two kinds of support. Please understand this. There's two kinds of support in Islamic work. On the one hand, support is your volunteers. That's one kind of support. For an organization, it's volunteers or support. And the other support is the financial support, the social support, the advertising support. Okay, the donors. Okay, or some famous celebrity is going to come visit your organization. It's going to give the organization a boost, right? So that's different. Two different kinds of support. In the case of the Prophet's work, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he's got the Sahaba. That's his volunteers. Those are his volunteers. And then he's hoping if some of the leaders of Quraysh become Muslim, then it will give Islam a huge boost. Because if the, well, even one celebrity from Makkah becomes Muslim, it's a big deal. How much help did we get from Umar becoming Muslim? From Hamza becoming Muslim? It was a big deal. Even Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu being Muslim was a big deal. Now, the ayat are from Surah Al-Kahf. وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَهُ You remain patient with those who call on their master night and day. They only want his face. They want to see Allah. The Sahaba that are poor. وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ Don't allow your eyes to turn away from them. Don't pay attention to the leaders. Don't get too caught up in, I want to get the leaders to become Muslim. The Prophet is being told this. You know why you want to get a leader? Because the leaders got connections, right? Because the leaders got connections. Allah started the surah by saying, these sahaba have a connection with me. That should be enough for you. مُعَلَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ They day and night they're connected to me. All they want to see is my face. Those are my people. Don't turn away from them. That's the most valuable asset you have. In other words, don't be impressed with wealth, status, and don't think that that will give your organization a boost. Sincere volunteers, sincere workers are the biggest asset you will ever have. Don't overlook it. That's a leader. The leader who values those grunt workers that aren't famous, that aren't rich, but they are ready to give every bit of their effort for you, you appreciate them. وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَكَ عَنْهُمْ And the Prophet wasallam, if he pays attention to, you, you have to understand this carefully, because we're not learning about the Prophet as a Prophet right now, Ali wasallam. We're le learning about the Prophet as a leader. As a leader specifically. As a leader, your job is very sensitive. You might not even realize it. People are always looking at you. And people have a lot of emotional attachment to you. So if the Prophet ﷺ pays too much attention to the wealthy, 
the Sahaba might start feeling unimportant. I mean, we're here, but those are the really important people. And if that feeling sets inside them, that we are less valuable and they are more valuable, the work is finished. The work is gone. When they start feeling the Prophet has more admiration and value for the rich, for the powerful, for the, the a'imma of Quraysh, and he has less for us, it's finished. And to protect, and the Prophet ﷺ didn't even do that. He didn't even give that impression. But Allah is so worried about the morale of the Sahaba that he is very, very tough with the Rasul وسلم, when it comes to even maybe possibly giving that impression. So much so that the ayah says, Turidu zinat al hayatid dunya? You want the beauty of worldly life? <sighs> so Allah is talking to his messenger. What does the messenger want? He doesn't want kingdom. He doesn't want rule. He wants Islam to win in this world. But the way Allah said it is because Allah is warning his messenger. Because the messenger's standards are really high. The same thing happens in Surah Abasa. A blind Sahabi, for God's sake, he's blind. So when the Prophet frowned, sallallahu alayhi wa he can't see it. If I frown at you, you can see it. He looks kind of upset. How is a blind Sahabi going to know that the Prophet is frowning? Is he going to be offended? He didn't offend his feelings. But the standards of leadership are so high. Even the remotest possibility that you might make them feel unimportant will not go unnoticed. What are we learning? The sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ as a leader and the sunnah of Allah to, to perfect his leadership والسلام, is that you give the highest regard to your volunteers. The ones you think are the most insignificant even. They have socially no backing, financially they're not very rich. All they have to offer you is their sincerity and their du'as to Allah. That's it. Those are your most important assets. وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا And let me tell you about the other guy you're trying to impress. Don't follow the one whose heart we have emptied out of remembrance. We've made him heedless of our remembrance. وَالتَّبَعَهَا While all he follows is his desires. The leaders are worthless. They're not worth anything. Don't worry about them. Then look, Allah Azza wa Jal says, I love this ayah so much. Surah Al-Hijr. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ we have given you seven highly praised ones. And we've given you the great Qur'an, meaning the Fatiha and the Qur'an. وَلَا يَتَمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَا بِهِ أَزْوَاجًا مِّنْهُمْ Don't let your eyes turn to what we've facilitated them, some groups among them. Don't turn to their wealth. Don't look at their wealth. Don't look at their strength. Don't look at their status. Before Allah even told the Prophet ﷺ, don't look at their wealth, don't look at their status, don't look at what they have, don't look at their elite status. What did he tell him first? I've given you Qur'an. You shouldn't look for anything else. SubhanAllah. I've given you Fatiha and the great Qur'an. Your eyes shouldn't go anywhere else. It's such an amazing, amazing kalam from Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he says, وَخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ وَاخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِمَنْ تَبِعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ You know, خَفَضَ لَهُ جَنَاحَهُ In the Arabic language is a bird lowering its wings. It's used for parents. When you're humble to your parents. The Prophet is told, be humble to the Sahaba that are following you. The Prophet is told to be humble. عليه الصلاة والسلام To the Sahaba. Please hear me, it's not incorrect English. I didn't say the companions have to be humble to the Prophet. Allah commanded His Prophet وسلم, to be humble to the followers. لِمَنْ تَبِعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Whoever follows you from among the believers, be extremely humble to them. Be appreciative of them. SubhanAllah. This is the command of Allah to His Messenger. To be humble to His companions. SubhanAllah. Don't look anywhere else. These are the people you have to be the best to. What do we find in our leadership? Amir Saab is yelling at everybody. He gets mad, people are scared to talk to him. He's intimidating. He's not a friend. Certainly not humble. Certainly not friendly. Certainly not approachable. That's not the sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ. By Allah's mandate. And it's not once, Allah said this twice. وَاخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِمَنْ تَبِعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Lower your wings, Surah Shura again. Humble your wings before whoever follows you among the believers. وَإِنْ عَصَوْكَ 
And if they disobey you, قُلِ إِنِّي بَرِيُّمْ مِمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Then tell them I have nothing to do with what you do. So long as you are with me, I will be the humblest to you. And if you leave my mission, I will say I have nothing to do with you. SubhanAllah. I'm not going to be an authoritative figure over you. I'm not going to do that. So this is, is such a hard thing to understand, to, to internalize. But then the jewel of it all. This is the one I want to spend the most time on. If you understand this ayah, I personally believe if a person understands this next ayah, Ali Imran, then they understand what it means to be a leader in Islam. This, this one ayah says it all. Surah, uh, Surah Ali Imran, ayah number 159. This is the last discussion we're having. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ Then it is by some incredible mercy from Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Arabic language, He doesn't say فَبِي رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ By the mercy of Allah. No, He added the word ma. We say ma at What incredible, unimaginable mercy it is from Allah. In grammar they say al ma zaida. What unimaginable mercy of Allah it is, especially His, that you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are lenient towards them. You are lint alahum. You are lenient towards them. You know the Prophet ﷺ had deep love for his uncle. Deep love for his uncle, Hamza. Anhu. I, when I was at Hajj, may Allah reward Shaykh Umar, he took us on a tour. He, we, we went to Uhud and he walked us through the entire battle. You know what happened at Uhud. There are some Sahaba, there are some Sahaba whose haste. You could even call it an innocent mistake. There's one reading of history where you can call it an innocent mistake. Led to several Muslim lives. Including who? Hamza The uncle of the Prophet. Ali Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He's shaheed. Seventy great sahaba are shaheed at Uhud. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is knocked out. His tooth falls out. His mouth is filled with blood. There's a rumor spread that he's been killed. The Muslims are giving up on the battlefield. Then finally he gets up and then they have to make a humiliating retreat up the mountain. إِذْ تُصْعِدُونَ وَلَا تَلْوُونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ فِي أُخْرَاكُمْ You were climbing up and not even turning back to see anybody. Is that humiliating or what? And the messenger is calling you from behind you. فَأَصَابَكُمْ غَمَّمْ بِغَمٍ لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَىٰ مَا فَاتَكُمْ Then Allah hits you with calamity on top of calamity. One on top of the other. This was a catastrophe. So when it's all over, does the Prophet have a right, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be mad at those few archers that left their post? Does he have a right to be angry? These Sahaba must be feeling the guilt of their life. The Prophet almost got killed. His beloved uncle is gone. Seventy of the great shahad. A battle that was won has just been lost. He should be extremely upset. Now they're waiting, the Prophet's gonna come and talk to us. Can you imagine the fear they must have had? After that meeting with the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and before the, me the Messenger meets with them, Allah has a meeting with the Messenger. Before he meets with them, Allah reveals to him, wait, it is by the special mercy of Allah, linta lahum, you are lenient towards them. Linta comes from the word lean in Arabic. And lean means a soft date. You are soft towards them. You know there's some kajur, you eat it and it's like a rock. And there's the, like the Medina date. You eat it and it just melts in your mouth. That's lean. You are so lenient towards them. The Prophet is about to go and express his frustrations and Allah says it is a special mercy, an unimaginable gift from God that you are incredibly lenient towards these people. Towards which people? The ones that you deserve to be angry at. Not just because they failed some little tiny task you gave them, they cost Muslim lives. They were given explicit orders. They cost the life of your beloved uncle. There's not something small. You have all the right to be mad. But Allah Azza wa doesn't even say, La taghdab. Doesn't begin like that. Says, no, this is Allah's special mercy that you're so nice to them. <laughs> you're so lenient towards them. Walau kunta faddal. And if you were tough, fadd, harsh, fadd in Arabic, ghalid al qalb, 
insensitive of the heart. Qalid means so hard that nothing penetrates. Ghilda, toughness. Nothing should penetrate. So whatever excuses they make won't go inside your heart. If you were tough, hard-hearted, if you were insensitive, harsh, mean, scolding, angry when you met with them, if you did that, لَن فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ in fadda, by the way, Arabic class, in fa'ala yanfa'ilu in fi'al, in fadda yanfaddu in fidad. It's irregular. In fidad, you know what it's mean? it means? To dis English translation says to disperse. But let me tell you, it's something so much more beautiful. In fidad in Arabic is used when you take a zujaja, a glass, and you break it, and the glass goes in every direction. The spreading of the glass when it breaks, that's in fidad. And this is used to describe the sp running away of the sahaba. Lan fadu. They would have dispersed, and by the way, when a glass breaks and spreads, can you recover it or no? So they would, they would have run away in a way that they would have never come back. Now I want you to think about this for a second. Who are we talking about? We're talking about the people who laid down their lives for Islam. They believed in the Qur'an. They knew its miracle in its original language. They had full iman that this is the haqq. And Allah says about that greatest generation, He says, if you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the leader was mean, they would have run away even if it's the truth. Even if it's the haq. The best generation would have run away. It's a special mercy of Allah, you're so nice. <laughs> That's leadership. That's the expectation of leadership. And if you can't be nice, you can't be that merciful, especially at the time when you're supposed to be angry. This is not just, bro, I'm usually nice, but they made me really upset. They made you more upset than the archers at Uhud? Really? What did they do? Did they leave their post from the roof of the masjid? What did they do? Why are you so angry? Because when the Prophet ﷺ had the right to be that angry, where he himself almost got killed, that angry, that the work of Islam almost came to an end. The mission almost failed. That angry, Allah says, you should be nice to them. You shouldn't be harsh to them. They'll run away from you. They would have run away from you. The Sahaba would have run away from you. And he doesn't even say, لَن فَضُّ مِنْك يَقُولْ لَن فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ They wouldn't be anywhere near you. They'd go way away from you. There's مُبَالَغَ فِي الْكَلَامِ لَن فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ and what should you do before you meet with them? Allah says to His Messenger, let me orient you. This is what you do. Fa'fu anhum. Lovingly forgive them. Lovingly pardon them. First thing you go and say to them, it's okay. Koi baat nahi. Hota hai. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I got nothing against you. Fa'fu anhum. First you tell, before they even apologize. He didn't, Allah didn't reveal an ayah to the Sahaba saying, like you know he revealed an ayah about the sahaba, about, about the munafiqoon. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمْ إِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ استغفروا. When, when they're told to make istighfar, لَوَوْ رُوسَهُمْ You know, when they're asked to make forgiveness, when they're asked to make dua to the messenger, you know, to make istighfar for them, they turn their heads. Allah did not reveal an ayah in this passage telling the sahaba they should ask for forgiveness. Rather, he t revealed an ayah to the Prophet, the leader, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You go forgive them, and when you are done forgiving them, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you are going to go make du'a on your own by yourself in private. Wastaghfirullah, make du'a. Allah forgives them too. Not only do you forgive them, when you are by yourself, make du'a for them. That will be proof that you forgave them, because it's very hard for you to be by yourself making du'a for yourself and make du'a for somebody you're angry at. <laughs> You can't do it. But you're a leader. You have to make dua for your people. The ones that made you that mad, you have to make istighfar for them. And that is absolutely private. It is not public. It is not the Sahaba standing there embarrassed and the Prophet ﷺ says in front of everybody, May Allah forgive you. That's... Okay. فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Then place your trust in Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ No doubt Allah loves those who places their trust in Him. This last part critical. The Prophet ﷺ is the best decision maker that ever lived on the face of this earth. And in this ayah Allah gave him, even though you should take consultation, at the end of the day, you have the right to make your decision. But you, Messenger ﷺ, still will not trust your own decision. You will trust me. Put your trust in Allah. 
at the end of the day, whatever decisions we make, we don't know if they're good or bad. Even the messenger is not allowed to know if it's good or bad. You put your trust in Allah. Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. That the, every time Shura comes up, what keeps coming up? Tawakkul. Surah Shura, wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun. The ayah right before. Over here, Shura came up, Tawakkul came up. Every time. There is some relationship between giving opinion and trusting Allah. Allah is teaching us, give your opinion based on your knowledge, based on your experience, based on your sincerity. But you don't rely on your opinion. And success will not come because of your opinion. And failure will not come because your opinion was not followed. Success and failure will come from Allah Azza wa Jal. Your only reliance is to Allah. That's a heavy lesson to learn. This is the leadership of the Prophet ﷺ. Sensitive, concerned about the feelings. The Sahaba didn't even come and say anything. Allah attended to their feelings for the Prophet ﷺ. That, these are the qualities we have to instill in ourselves. Every member of a household here, every head of a household is a leader. This doesn't just apply when you're the general and you have soldiers underneath you. This is when you're a dad, when you're a husband. This is when you're the older brother. You have siblings under you. When you're a grandfather, when you're a father-in-law and a mother-in-law. This applies to you too. When you're the imam of the masjid, when you're the teacher at the Sunday school, when you're a teacher at the, you know, in the Arabic class. This applies to you too. It's hard. Oh boy, there are some students that make you mad. Oof. They will boil your blood. And if you, if you believe in this, then you have to go make salat and make dua for them. Not dua, yani ba'id bayni wa baynahum. Ya Allah, give me long distance between me and them. <laughs> make dua for them. The one that made you mad. The one that messed you up. Make dua for them. Islamic school teachers, listen up. There are kids that, are, that crawl under your skin. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that kid. You know, there's a picture that came in your head. If you're an Islamic school teacher, one child's picture just came in your head immediately. And he's looking at you winking like, right now. That one. Make dua for that kid. Not in front of everyone. May Allah help you. you. May Allah not make you the shaitan that you're becoming. It's not like that. In your own privacy, you make dua for them. Make dua for them. That th these, uh, th this actually, I, like I said before, and hopefully you see now how this is the golden ayah of leadership. The golden ayah of leadership. Leadership in crisis situation. That's when leadership is proven, when there's a crisis. That's when leadership is proven, when, you're, when your followers didn't follow you. Easy to call yourself a leader when everything's going fine. There's, everything has gone wrong. Now what do you do as a leader? Then you turn to Allah's guidance. Then you learn that. So we have to be people of confidence, people of competence, people of reliance on Allah, and people of the utmost like mercy and courtesy to those that we are leading in any way, shape or form. I sincerely pray that Allah Azza wa Jal guide all of us in all of the Islamic endeavors, all of the Islamic projects, all of the organizations, whether they are charity organizations, or they are umbrella organizations, or they are masjid organizations, or relief organizations, or youth organizations, or college organizations, Whatever organization, I even argue this can be applied in your businesses. As an employer, you're a leader. In our businesses, in our workplaces. That Allah Azza wa gives us the ability to implement these beautiful wisdoms that He's given us that pave the way for us to build a strong future, a strong tomorrow. A way of us cooperating with each other and the hearts coming closer and closer and closer together. So we don't become a community. Wallahi, I, I, you know why I was really motivated to do this? And I'm ending with this. I was motivated to do this because wherever I go in America, I don't care if I go east, west, south, north. After the khutbah, brother, can we talk to you? We have a problem in our masjid. Our president, blah, 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 blah. Our imam, blah, 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 blah. Our shura, blah, 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 blah. Our committee, blah, 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 blah. Our board member, blah, 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 blah. And I say, oh, wait, 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 hold on. Let me tell you what's going on. And I tell them the story. And they say, who told you? I said, we, Shaitan has a formula. It's like, you know, when you open a Walmart, it looks exactly the same. Masjid problems across America are exactly the same. They're exactly the same. No different. No different. No variety even. I'm like, give me something new. <laughs> give me something new. Any creativity in this? No, brother, they just, you know, this happened and this happened and they put the money there and this there. I was like, God, when are we going to learn? 
And when you talk to the people on both ends of the fight, you realize both of these people are volunteers. They mean well. They're people of families. They're good people. They, they have good intentions. Shaitan causes dissent among us. That's why we need this orientation over and over again. Not one time, over and over again. So we can fix our intentions and mend those ties. If you've had a fight with somebody in an organization, go give them a hug, apologize and say, let's start over. We can't afford this. This, this fight is not worth it because I want to stand next to you on Judgment Day. I want you and your family to be in Jannah and I want to be in Jannah too. This quarrel we have is not worth it. فَمَا أُوتِيتُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَمَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Just worldly things man, it's okay, it's not worth it. Our, our unity, Allahu yajma'u baynana, same passage right? Allahu yajma'u baynana wa ilayhi al-masir May Allah cause unity among us. Be united with your brother, with your sister. You know, let these petty things go. Don't hold on to them. Don't hold those grudges. Don't go, go back to the organization you quit because your feelings got hurt. Go back to them. You know, mend those ties. And become people of clear, considerate, respectful, thoughtful speech. A poet in Arabic says, I wish that my throat was one mile long. <laughs> because when the word comes out of my heart, and it's traveling in my neck, I have time to think about whether it should make it to my mouth or not. <laughs> so I can send it back. <laughs> you know, think about what you're going to say. قُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ It's actually جواب الطلب. If you speak the right word, Allah will fix your affairs. That's why it's majzum, yuslih. If you say the right thing, Allah will fix your matters. May Allah Azza wa Jal make uh, correct and fix all of our matters and bless all of our organizations and all the efforts that are happening. May Allah make all of you sincere, active volunteers and have your children become sincere, active volunteers in worthy, noble causes. May Allah help you in finding the cause that you can best be suited for and contribute to this deen for. And may Allah Azza wa Jal unite all of us on Judgment Day as believers under His shade. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.